Hey guys, welcome to the solution of problem 19. Um, so in this problem, we're asked to prove this identity. Um, this is not a uh, especially special identity. Uh, the reason I picked it actually is because it, it's going to give me a really good example of how badly these proofs can go. Um, so I often tell my students that, you know, it's, it's easy to get lost. Um, and sort of, you know, I know where, where you've been, you, you have to go these wrong ways to, to learn. Um, what the right way should be. But as you get better at these things, um, it's much easier to see what the right way should be. Um, and so I wanted to really give an example of, of what can go wrong. So you know that, yes, we've all kind of been there before um, and you just have to kind of push through and, and go this wrong way until you realize, okay, maybe that's not gonna work um, and try a different approach. So often when you get these proofs, um, sort of the first thing to look at is you, you look at you know, obviously you have to take one side and try and, and show that it's um, equal to the other side. And so the obvious place to start is, is the side that you can do the most with. And if you pick the wrong side, um, it's often very hard to try and um, sort of get the solution. You have to, usually you have to come up, you have to add some stuff in um, to get to the other side. Uh, so personally, looking at this identity, probably the first side I would pick um, to start with is this side, because there's a few things that I know that I can do with this side. Uh, if I look at this side, there's not, none of the standard identities um, really apply to, to this side. In fact, there's sort of only one, um, one sensible thing to do with this side. And it turns out that that makes the, the proof extremely simple. So sort of once you do that step to this side, it all falls out um, in a few lines. But okay, so let's say we, we make the first sort of rational decision. We decide that we can do something with the left-hand side. Okay, so... Okay, so we take our left-hand side and we're gonna try and do something with that. And so now maybe the next thing to sort of to, to think about is, okay, on the right side, I've got signs on the top and causes on the bottom. So let's change this tan to be sine over cos. Now, this is really set up to then use the addition formula, right? There's sort of nothing else you can do. Um, and we want to end up with some addition here anyway. So that seems like a sensible thing to do. Okay. And so now we're going to start running into some problems. Okay, so we've We've sort of got some additions here, or addition and subtraction, that lines up there. Um, we've got sines and coses, which is good, but all our angles are alpha over two and beta over two, and we're supposed to end up with just alpha and beta as the angles on the right-hand side. Um, and so how can, we, how can we tackle that? Okay, so how are we gonna take this mess um, and try and get alphas and betas instead of alpha over twos and beta over twos? Um, so if you're willing not to give up at this point, um, probably the next sort of, the next thing that you might try and do is go, okay, if I want uh, sine alpha on two to become sine of alpha, I'm probably gonna need a, a double angle formula, right? So it'd be nice if I had a cos of alpha over two here, because then I could simplify that to sine of alpha. Okay, and so how can we sort of arrange to do that? Um, sort of the only, the only way we can try and introduce some of this stuff is to multiply the top and bottom by the same thing, right? Um, so let's just try one thing. If we try and sort out the signs here, um, one thing I might try and do is multiply by this. Okay, and so when I multiply by this, I'm going to get... Um, I'm going to get a sine alpha on two times cos alpha on two, and I'm going to get a sine beta on two times cos beta on two, and so that will at least sort that out there. Okay, so if we multiply that out, we end up with, with this, um, and so these can change, so we can use our double angle formula here. Um, this is really a half sine alpha. And I won't rewrite the denominator because it's the same thing. All right, and so 
we now have a sine alpha and sine beta, which is sort of close, well, maybe a step closer to where we're trying to head, but we still have a whole huge mess around all this stuff. Um, and so maybe then you could try and multiply by something else to try and sort that out. Um, you might even realize that sort of back up here, it might have been better to have, um, to subtract something off so that we end up multiplying out some brackets. Maybe we can get some cancellation happening. Um, but it's sort of then a big guess. How, what, what should we add on here? What do we need to change here to make this all work out? And so we're in a pretty big mess right now. Um, but you could see that at each step we had a good reason for, for doing what we did. Um, we started with a side that we thought we could do something with. We did some sensible things to try and work towards the right hand side. Um, and we still have just ended up in this mess. Um, and at this point, really, I, I'd give up. Um, it's going to be very difficult to see what the correct thing to multiply by here should be. Okay, so we give up on that first proof, right? We tried to start with the left-hand side. We thought we could do something with it, and we ended up in a huge mess. Um, and so now sort of the only thing we can do is, is stare at the right-hand side and think, okay, is there anything we could have done with the right-hand side? Um, and actually, there is one thing that we can do with the right hand side um, and it's not one of your standard sort of formulas that you usually see in high school um, but it is an identity that we saw yesterday uh, and that is that you can take a sum of signs um, and there's a sum to product formula there's also a sum to product formula for the for cos as well and also for the mixture um, they're not as common um, but that's sort of the only thing that we can use here or the only sensible thing that we can use and it turns out that the proof will fall out as sort of as soon as we use it, All right? So if we use the sum to product formula, we get this. Okay, um, and you can see straight away, these are gonna cancel out and the twos can cancel out. And so we're left with sine of alpha plus beta over two on cos of alpha plus beta over two. Um, and so that is tan of alpha plus beta over two. And it's sort of crazy. Uh, this thing happens a lot that um, you start with one side, you end up in some complete mess. Um, and starting with the other side, it just falls out in a few lines. And so that's one of the frustrating things about doing these proofs is that you can often end up spending hours getting nowhere. Um, and then there's some simple trick that, that makes the, the proof completely simple. Uh, but the more you do it, the more you get sort of used to, to knowing what tricks are there, what ways to go. Um, this one's sort of particularly tricky. Um, so even if you, even for someone experienced, you can make some good choices along the way and still end up in a mess. So now that we've seen the correct proof, um, you, you might go back and think, well, is there any way that we could have salvaged what we originally tried to do, right? Is there any way we could have made it work? And so if you remember sort of where we got stuck in the original uh, proof was that we, we got to this point and we sort of realized that, okay, maybe we, we need to multiply something in here to, um, to get these alpha over twos and beta over twos to be alpha and beta. Uh, but it was really not clear what that thing should be. Um, and so now that we know the correct proof, uh, the thing that we actually need here is going to be this thing. Okay, so this is, um, this is cos of alpha on two minus beta on two. Okay, and we know that these were this is sine of alpha plus beta on two. And this is cos of alpha plus beta on two. Um, and we know from the, the other side that we worked through that this is the thing that should be multiplied by. Okay. And so the reason that this actually works is because this is what cos of alpha on two minus cos of beta on two expands out to. Um, and so what we have now, if we rewrite these back in the sort of where we originally had them, And then write this as cos of alpha on minus beta on two. Okay, we're almost back to the right hand side. Um, we just have to add some twos in on top and bottom.
Okay, and so we know from the second proof we did that this is the top is sine alpha plus sine beta. And the bottom is cos alpha plus cos beta. Okay, and sort of the most likely thing that would have happened, so even if you managed to, to get to this point and add the right thing on, you would have had a whole bunch of expanding um, and simplifying to try and get these, then using the double angle formulas to end up with the alpha and beta here. Um, and it would have been a massive mess.